Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Debbie and I read a lot of books. And of course I've got another one. This one I can compare to a TV series that was made of it, which I actually watched first and then I read the book. The book was recommended to me on Box after I watched the series. And it's Bridgerton, The Duke and I. So that's the front cover for you. I'm sure a lot of people know about this book and the series. I think the series was like had ridiculous ratings due to how many people watched it within like a week's period of it being out. Very very good series, really enjoyed it. I watched one episode of it with my mum and my dad. My dad decided it wasn't for him so me and my mum watched the rest of it together and as you can imagine came to one episode in particular that me and my mum were just laughing all the way through. <laughs> I definitely could not have watched that episode with my dad. Basically it's a very sexy episode <laughs> towards the end of the season. That episode was kind of like watching Game of Thrones with my parents, just couldn't do it. But weirdly, I think because of the relationship me and my mum have, it just allowed us to laugh a lot during that episode where they're going I thought they were trying to get pregnant this doesn't seem to be the way to do it <laughs> but yeah so it's The Duke and I by Julia Quinn the ebook is 408 pages because I think this version was released after the series came out so the author added an additional prologue um, to prologue? epilogue? no Epilogue, yeah, prologue's at the beginning, isn't it? <laughs> Getting words mixed up. But yeah, there's an additional epilogue at the end, throwing the characters into the future. So you actually see the characters in their 40s at the end of this book, which... So yeah, if you haven't read the updated version with the new epilogue, then you really do need to go and find it, because it was quite nice to read. I admit, I feel like I got some spoilers for other books in that additional epilogue but yeah I really enjoy the series and it's obvious now from reading the book that they definitely padded stuff out for the series you know because I mean the book is 408 pages and then they padded it out to was the series 8 episodes or 12 episodes I think I need to look that up yeah the series was 8 episodes but yeah I haven't even read the blurb yet have I got the blurb here? That's the question. So I'm tap, tap, tapping away. Okay. In the ballrooms and drawing rooms of Regency London, rules abound. From their earliest days, children of aristocrats learn how to address an earl and curtsy before a prince, while other dictates of the tongue are unspoken, yet universally understood. A proper duke should be imperious and aloof. A young, marriageable lady should be amiable, but not too amiable. Daphne Bridgerton has always failed at the latter. The fourth of eight siblings in her close-knit family, she has formed friendships with the most eligible young men in London. Everyone likes Daphne for her kindness and wit, but no one truly desires her. She is simply too honest for that, too unwilling to play the romantic games that captivate gentlemen. Amiability is not a characteristic shared by Simon Bassett, Duke of Hastings. Recently returned to England from abroad, he intends to shun both marriage and society, just as his callous father shunned Simon throughout his painful childhood. Yet an encounter with his best friend's sister offers another option. If Daphne agrees to a fake courtship, Simon can deter the mamas who parade their daughters before him. Daphne, meanwhile, will see her prospects and her reputation soar. The plan works like a charm at first but amid the glittering, gossipy, cutthroat world of London's elite, there is only one certainty. Love ignores every rule. So it's in um, romance and historical romance and fiction. Target audience adult. As if you've seen the series, you'll understand why. <laughs> to be fair though, the book definitely isn't as bad as the series was in regards to kind of the sex and things. <laughs> I think teenagers would enjoy the book without getting too cringy. I mean, I used to read Mills and Boone when I was a teenager, and this was kind of roughly about the same kind of sexy times as Mills and Boone. <laughs> I 
I'm amazed my mother really had me to read Mills and Boo to be honest when I was younger. <laughs> But yeah, it just is a really, really good book. I found it fairly obvious from reading this book and having watched the series first that they padded out the series with bits from other books to start their stories because this book literally just focuses on the Duke and Daphne. I think because I also like stuff like Downton Abbey, it just, yeah. If you like stuff like Downton, if you like a good romance thing, and as I said, you know, it's Regency London, so you've got that kind of his historic part of it as well. Yeah, it was just a really, really good book. And, you know, for somebody who generally prefers to read, like, murder mystery type stories, um, obviously you see that I've got quite an eclectic taste anyway, you know, I'm reading another kind of just romance fiction book. Then I've also got... The Deborah Harkness books going on as well. I've also got Stephen King getting ready to be opened up. So yeah, there's lots. I've got a plethora of tastes in books. <laughs> on the front cover, there's a quote that says, truly our contemporary Jane Austen. And I definitely get that kind of feel from it. It's easy to read as well, because considering that it is set in Regency London, I think there's certain parts of it where you just think, but you do wonder if the way the language is used is going to affect the reading of it, but it didn't. It's like when you read Shakespeare and it takes a while to kind of get used to um, the way certain things are phrased. It's not too jarring. And also, because I'm reading this having watched the series, so I know secrets that aren't released until later in the books. Because um, a lot of people compared Bridgerton to kind of an old-fashioned gossip girl because you start each chapter with some gossip pages. Hi there, Editing Debbie here. I just wanted to make a little note of something because you'll hear me talking a little bit about the gossip pages in this section, but I don't go very much into it. And it's because in the book, the identity of Lady Whistledown just isn't as prominent in the first book. Um, as the series would make it out to be. So that's why I don't talk about it that much. Just like that, you know. And to be honest, thanks to the series, I just read all those bits with Julie Andrews in my head. Because <laughs> my brain can just pluck voices out. So whenever we were reading the gossip pages, I did just have Julie Andrews' voice in my head reading those bits. Because when you watch the series, I feel like the gossip narration is pretty much all the way through. You do kind of have it all the way through the chapters, but it's only at the beginning of each chapter, so you just get like a small little bit of the gossip, and then it carries on with the general story. So it will be interesting to see how the other books do it, and also how the series continues to do it, if that makes any sense at all. I might have had a different relationship with those sections had I read the book first. Because when you're just reading it, you do kind of wonder what the point of those narrations are. Especially when you really have no clue who it is. I feel like the series really elevated the gossip pages and the way it was done. But yeah. Thanks to my imagination, I could just imagine all the actors involved. And obviously there are certain characters that you don't actually meet in the book. I really enjoyed it. I really, really did enjoy it. But yeah, I just think the way it's been written is very clever. And the translating those certain bits to the series, that's just been done really, really well. It's a book that definitely lends itself to a screen adaptation um because there are some books you know i can read and it's just like oh can i imagine this is a film can i imagine this is a series to be honest actually upon reading it you know you can see it more as a film than a series but the series has obviously come out because it is a book series not that long ago they announced they were thinking about doing harry potter as a tv series and i've been thinking that since i read it when i was a kid just a really good book it's not too difficult to read chapters. I wouldn't say they were long, but they're not short either. They're just like the perfect length. Something was always happening, so you know, it's not... You never felt like it was like a lull in the narrative at all. It 
there was constantly something happening. It was interesting because as I was comparing it in my head to the series, I was just thinking, oh, so that's this bit and that's this bit. There was something that I liked in the series where they expanded upon a character um, from the beginning of the book. Um, basically, it's, I can't remember what the character's name is, but there is an older man who has interest in Daphne and in the book once um Daphne and Simon have confronted him he just kind of goes and just like okay I just obviously I got it over my head that kind of thing uh, but in the series they make him out to be a lot nastier than he is they bring in his mother played by Caroline Quentin which I absolutely loved because I adore Caroline Quentin but they really expanded that role and made him into more of a baddie than he actually was in the book which again you can understand why they do that because without expanding upon that character for the series um, I think the development of the story would have just not really had that much ebb and flow to it. The real thing that's in the way of the relationship is Simon's relationship with his father which in this is established in the first chapter essentially. I I think it was like in episode two or episode three, wasn't it, that we actually got Simon's story. And the way it handles things to do with like stammers in regards to Simon's character. As you can tell, I've got lots to say. <laughs> yeah, I finished this yesterday. I think it took me about three days to read it. But yeah, it was first released in 28th of April, 2015. I didn't realize how long ago that the book came out. Obviously, I mean, it was still only like six years ago. I just I thought it was a bit more recent than that I don't know why probably because of the series to be honest but yeah so I'm definitely looking forward to reading the next book this one is available to read till um May this year on Borrow Box so I'm wondering if um, once this isn't available anymore that they might release book two maybe before the new series comes out because I know they've been filming it fingers crossed yeah very much enjoyed that one. The next book that I've started reading on here is Into the Woods by David Mark. As I said, I'm also reading book two of Discovery of Witches. I've just restarted that um, because I've got the actual books now. And then I'm also reading A Country Escape. I've almost finished A Country Escape by, uh, is that Katie Ford? Yeah, Katie Ford, I almost said Kate Ford there, by Katie Ford, and I'm really, really enjoying that one. So, yeah, I'm not far off finishing that one. And then some recent books that I've downloaded are uh, Frankenstein by Jeanette Winterson. It's like a modern day Frankenstein with a twist, which I'm looking forward to that one. There's um, The Women of Primrose Square by Claudia Cowell. And I've also got Girl A by Abigail Dean. But then I've also got On Reserve, I've got The Eve Illusion. I can't even speak. The Eve Illusion by Tom Fletcher and Giovanna Fletcher. And I've also got You Are Not Alone by Sarah Peckin and Greer Hendricks. My battery's about to die, so I'm going to say thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you next week for another video. Mwah! Stay safe, everybody.